welcome to r slash confessions, where we get to hear the most disturbing confessions. Hi guys. So I know usually communities like this are where people post confessions, but I wanted to take the time tonight to tell you all a heartbreaking and shocking story that I experienced in the hope that I can raise awareness of this type of thing and properly expose the individual involved who is still out there to this day. First of all let me begin by telling you that I'm not hiding my identity and I will not be hiding the identity of the individual involved. I have nothing to hide and he needs to be exposed once and for all. It's one thing telling your friends, posting it on Facebook etc. But posting something like this to an entire community of people I don't know is a whole new chapter. So, let's begin. My name is Will Murgatroyd, and I'm a 21-year-old young man studying a radio and audio degree at a university I will not name. I'm also a radio presenter and a vocalist, and have recently had a couple of singles and an ep released. I sing a lot of covers, mainly country and western. I was born perfectly sighted, perfectly normal, however you would define normal, but for our family, things took a turn for the worse on December 19th, 1999. When my evil father, Mr. Anthony Robert Gradwell, violently shook me when he was home alone with me and I was just 7 weeks old. My mum and her friend had gone out for some drinks together as it was the first time my mum had been out since having me and of course she deserved some downtime. Of course not remembering any of this myself as I was so young, so I'm going by what my mum has told me and what came out of the finding of fact trial Tony stayed downstairs all evening on his exercise bike and later on when he came up to carry out the necessary baby care tasks, he took me out of my cot and violently shook me. A Manchester Evening News article published in 2004 stated that he shook me in a fit of temper, however we will never know what caused this man to break in such a way that night. He was an abusive man in general, was Tony. Extremely nasty to my mum, despite coming across as extremely charming at first, which is why she fell for him. They met at work in 1998 and had me on October 29th, 1999. When my mum and her friend came home that night after having some drinks, before mum could even get the key in the door, Tony was at the door telling them that the baby is not well, and with that mum and her friend rushed upstairs. There I was, on the end of the bed, emitting high-pitched squeals, totally unreal for a baby. So of course, I was rushed to hospital, and during this time Tony did not say anything, did not admit guilt at all. It eventually transpired that I had shaken baby syndrome, and this caused vision loss, brain damage and a fractured right tibia, the latter two problems they fixed at the hospital, but the vision loss has always remained. I have very little vision left now. In my younger years, I never used to think much about my situation. Obviously I knew, to an extent what had happened, who was responsible, and why I was visually impaired. But at that age to me, I was just visually impaired, and that's it. We all just tried to get on with life the best we could. My mum divorced Tony in 2000, and for whatever reason, he was found not guilty, so of course he is still at large to this day. The reality of the situation didn't hit home until April 2018, when myself, my mum and my stepdad, who arrived on the scene back in 2014 had gone to see a film called Ghost Story at the cinema. The film was audio described, so I was able to follow it easily, and I rather enjoyed it up until the end. When there were still about 20 minutes of the film left, a part came which was extremely action packed, and lacked audio description, so I turned to my mum, and asked her to describe what was happening. Obviously because we were in the cinema, she couldn't do this, and so she said, that she will explain later, and it was only then, that I began to feel angry, angry at him, angry at the fact, that he carried out such a violent act back in 1999, and despite telling my mum in communications shortly after the incident that he would, contact me when I became of age, which I had done the previous, yeah, he hadn't, probably because he was too ashamed and couldn't face admitting guilt and taking responsibility for his actions. On the way home that night, we all had a shouting match in the car, ending up with my stepdad shouting at me and me bursting into tears, and it was then that my folks suggested that I make the contact with Tony to find out why he did what he did they had tried to console me as much as they could, and now I especially was at breaking point. 
It took a few months, because what do you say to somebody who abused you several years ago? It's not just a simple, hi dad, I know we haven't spoken or seen each other for 18 years, but do you want to meet for a coffee? After a lot of thought, I ended up sending him an ML at work, simply asking him why he did what he did and why he left us to pick up the pieces of the mess that he made. I knew what his ML address was because both him and my mum used to work in the police, so his ML was the exact same as my mum's, with different names of course. A couple of days passed, and one night whilst he was working the night shift, he emailed back, telling me that it was nice to hear from me, and he had always thought about making contact with me, but didn't know what response he would get. He started, predictably of course, denying what he had done, telling me that he played over that night time and time again in his head and swore up and down that all he was trying to do was revive me after I fell ill, which of course is utter bullshit. He started telling me things about his two sons, Jack, at the time 12 years old, and Evan, 6, and how they knew all about me, which again is bullshit, because Tony hasn't seen me for many years, and doesn't know a thing about me. He spouted off all this bullshit, telling me that he loves me and always has, and how he is so happy, that I've made the contact with him. Of course you would be mate, because you would never have contacted me. If you loved me that much you would have jumped through every hoop to find me and get a message to me if you so desired. Me and my family were not having any of his lies, so a few days later we composed a hard-hitting response back to him, telling him that actually you did do what you did Tony, and these are the things that I struggle to do now because of what you did, and would you believe it, we received no response. Tony retired from work in November 2018, and shortly after this, I sent a message to his wife on Facebook, Susan, explaining the cruel act he had carried out in December 1999. I made a throwaway Facebook account under my full name of William Murgatroyd to make it look more official and formal, and also to stop them finding out where I really am, and what I was doing at the time. I didn't hear anything back from Susan predictably, and this was around the time when I started having anger outbursts due to the situation, especially due to the fact we had had no closure, and despite me confronting Tony in August 2018, he had never accepted responsibility for his actions. Outburst triggers could be anything from not being able to understand a film or a program on the TV due to lack of audio description to something minor like bumping into things or people, and these outbursts usually resulted in household arguments, leaving my folks annoyed, and me crying, feeling ashamed of the entire situation, and again, angry at him. In the summer of 2019, my mum was going through some old junk, and amongst the old junk she found some emails from him, which had been sent shortly after the incident occurred. In one of the emails, there were some phone numbers given, because Tony wanted me to meet my half-brother, Jack, who would have been very young at the time, a little younger than me the numbers were the landline number, his mobile number and his wife, Susan back quote s number. Because my outbursts had reached such a point of no stopping, and I didn't know what to do anymore, I was very eager to try and give these phone numbers a call, so I could confront my abuser in person. After a couple of days of trying the mobile numbers to no avail, I managed to get through to Tony on the landline one Thursday night in September 2019, and we spoke for about half an hour, and unfortunately it was the exact same situation as the emails, half an hour of me confronting him with the evidence, putting him in his place, and him denying everything. I ended up really shouting at him that night, and to this day I cannot believe I took that extra step. People say I'm very brave for confronting him like that, because that must have taken a lot of courage, and believe me, it took more than courage. To be honest I don't know how I did it, but I'm glad that I did, and I hope he was shitting himself for Britain after the phone call. For months after the phone call, my mental health spiraled downhill, to the point where I was just so lost. I would never have gone to the extreme of drugs, drink, and suicide, but I was in a very dark place, and I don't know what I would have done without the help and support from my loving friends and family. I'm very pleased to report now, however, that after seeking lots of counseling, and thanks to the continued support from my friends and family, I'm in a much better position now, and have not had a single outburst since September 2020, when I was actually able to control my anger by walking out of the room and having some downtime. So, there you have it, the tragic story of how a young man lost his vision 
because of a lunatic, scumbag, evil father. I wanted to put this up tonight not because I'm angry at the moment, but because I feel that my story needs to be told. Before I joined a shaken baby syndrome support group on Facebook I thought I was a minority, but it turns out that's not the case unfortunately, and the amount of people who get away with these disgusting crimes is downright disgusting. So, Anthony Robert Gradwell, born October 8, 1969, I hope this post finds its way to you someday and makes you feel guiltier than ever there are over 800,000 people in this community, and I hope they all read it and understand just how serious shaken baby syndrome is. Thanks guys. Now for the next story. I've done everything in my power to ruin my father's life after he ruined my childhood TL. Doctor my father ruined my childhood. So I made sure to ruin his. He won't be a free man ever again, but I'm freer than ever. My father was always a violent and abusive person. As long as I can remember I was a primary target of his outbursts. I have three siblings and often I would even be blamed and disciplined, even if it was impossible for me to have done whatever he was angry about. He was also a drug dealer and often had parties on Fridays and or Saturdays with his mates who I'm pretty sure were only his friends, to score free drugs and alcohol. One night when I was 8 years old my father called me out from my room and there was a discussion between a handful of men and him about me. I won't get into too many details about the result of that conversation. All I will say is that from the ages of 8 through until 12, I was offered as an additional service. The violence was worse during this time than ever before and this could be the fact I was getting older or what he was allowing to occur, I'm not sure. A couple months before I turned 13, I confided in my best friend's mum about what was happening after she noticed some bruising on my arms. She put me in her car, drove me home, and confronted my parents. She came inside with me, got my things and we left. She took me in. I moved into a granny flat on my own about 18 months later and worked and put myself through high school, graduating second in my year. Just a little brag. I'm proud of myself. Four years after I left, my family were still very manipulative. They would steal money, threaten me for money, steal my possessions etc. For a number of years I kept evidence of my father's racist and homophobic comments on social media. He also asked for me to destroy his fraudulent passport he used to move countries not long after I did. He's been arrested for assault and he asked my mother to dispose of some evidence that would prove he used his photo with his brother's information to get a passport. I haven't spoken to anyone in my family for about 8 years. I always remembered the violence, but it wasn't until I was about 23 that I started remembering the rest. It's been an extremely hard few years since I started remembering, but I became very grateful for my survival instinct self. I've kept track of everyone in my family, I've become very good at keeping an eye from afar. But, the main thing has been my father. I've catfished him, and sent screenshots to his girlfriends. I've sent screenshots of the vile things he says online to his employers and he's lost jobs. I've signed him up for phone number subscriptions. All quite simple acts, until, I stepped it up a gear. I contacted a local motorbike club who do work for abused children etc. I showed them evidence I had of all his wrongdoings including a few messages where he admits what he did. They've been sitting across the road from his house, following him to work, intentionally intimidating him. A year ago I took my evidence of his identity fraud to the police and he's been arrested and has been refused bail. Regardless of if he serves jail time here, he will be deported to our home country. So, I've been in contact with authorities in our home country and providing evidence. One of the men they've identified and arrested with what I've been able to give them. They're in the process of extraditing my father for the crimes he committed against me. He has no idea that I'm behind any of it, nor do my siblings who still support him. While what he did to me and allowed others to do to me won't ever go away. I feel free now that he's not. I have a job I love, own a beautiful home, and live a great life with my supportive and loving husband. Now for the next story. I'm relieved my brother moved away. Last summer, my brother came by my apartment and asked me for money. I asked him what he needed it for, because if it was bills or groceries, I was more than happy to help. He wanted money for traveling to some festival. I told him no, that I couldn't lend away money for that. He got extremely mad, saying things like, 
I can't believe you act like this after all I've done for you. You ungrateful brat. You don't understand how much I need to socialize and drink at the moment. I'm so depressed. And much more. He knows how much I hate to let people down. And he knows how to play on my emotions. He also knows that pacing absolutely freaks me out. And he started to pace around my apartment. I freak out lock myself into the bathroom and he starts to knock on the door asking me for the money I had in my panic left my dog outside the bathroom door and my brother began to threaten to take him with him. In a bid to make him leave and to get my dog I panic leaving the bathroom and go into the bedroom to sit on the bed calling my dog who is also freaking out to my side. Big mistake, my brother corners me and watches I transfer all my funds to his account and then he just leaves while I'm visibly shaking. After the door closes, I burst into tears, my poor dog doing what he can to comfort me. Our relationship has always been strained with him constantly criticizing my life choices, belittling my mental health etc but after that, I've avoided him like the plague. Earlier this year, he asked for money again and I, being scared and traumatized of what had happened, gave him the money. But when time came to pay me back, he claimed that his paycheck hadn't come in, which I knew was a lie and something I never thought would happen, happened. I snapped. I told him that I needed the money right then and there, or I will call the cops. I told him that he was a garbage person for how he has treated not only me but also our autistic brother over the years. My brother scolded my other brother for accidentally leaving out a carton of milk. I told him how much I resented him for downplaying and belittling my mental health struggles, mocking my political views. I'm very much an environmentalist which my brother despises since he works in the oil industry and for pressuring me into drinking alcohol, with the excuse that he wants to see me drunk, when he knows that I'm not much of a drinker. My brother became so offended he claimed that he was now moving away because of me, and because of the hatred I showed him after all he had done for me. I later found out through my mother that he had been planning moving for months before I snapped at him. Now that he has moved, I have not seen or heard from him, and I'm relieved. I feel so much better. I feel happier, more confident and my friend says I'm like a new person and I feel like it too. I no longer have his clouds looming over me. My brother occasionally messages me, but I ignore them, and I don't feel bad about it. Now for he last story. My dad found my but toys this morning and I can't face him right now. Throw away because this is so humiliating. Me, 18 meters, and my dad bought my mom a locket for Mother's Day. It has a picture inside of our very first family photo from when I was still an infant. It's really sweet. Dad wrapped it and had me hide it in my room so she wouldn't find it and we could give it to her today. This morning we were making her breakfast in bed and he asked me to get him the locket. Without thinking, I said, just grab it from my top drawer and I'll bring the food down the hall. When I got to their room with the tray of food he had a weird look on his face but didn't say anything. We woke mom up with food in the locket and everything went fine. While I was loading the dishwasher my dad came into the kitchen and gave me a hug around my shoulders and said, I love you no matter what, son. That's when I remembered that I put my butt toys in my top drawer last night after I washed them. I was in a hurry to get to work so after I use them, sorry if that's TMI, I washed them and tossed them in my sock drawer. Ugh. So when my dad went to get the locket. He found my favorite dildo and the plug I wore for most of the day yesterday. So now I'm hiding in my room and dying inside of the thought of not only accidentally outing myself to dad, but impossibly telling my mom that I have but toys in my room. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have an amazing day.